Hi, good evening. I'm Beth Keller, and on behalf of the Highland Park Public Library, we'd like to welcome you to tonight's special program, a screening of the award-winning film, Love, Charlie, The Rise and Fall of Chef Charlie Trotter. Tonight's program is sponsored in part by the Friends of the Library. And I want to um, thank you guys all for braving the weather and the dire forecast for coming out tonight. So we're very pleased and excited that you're here. Love, Charlie opened in theaters in November and has been very well received. The film won the Best of Fest at the 2021 Chicago International Film Festival and recently the Taste Awards Best Feature Length Film. We're excited tonight to be joined by the director and writer of the film, Rebecca Halpern. Rebecca, a former Chicagoan who grew up on the North Shore, is joining us tonight via Zoom from Los Angeles. She'll introduce the film and she'll take questions after the screening. Rebecca is a documentary filmmaker whose work includes multiple seasons directing, writing, and producing the hit series American Greed and Gangland and the critically acclaimed six-part limited series Helter Skelter, which she co-executive produced for Epix. Rebecca also produced and wrote the feature documentary Who is Stan Smith, premiering at DAC NYC 2022. Most recently, she served as co-executive producer of the six-part Netflix series, How to Become a Mad Boss. Rebecca is committed to telling deeply personal stories in a way that is befitting of her subjects. And now I'll turn it over to Rebecca to introduce her film. Well, thanks so much for having me, Beth. I appreciate it. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, I have to tell you that we're expecting snow in Los Angeles tonight. So uh, my heart is with everyone who's had to bear uh, the winter. Wow, what a turnout. Um, I know you didn't come here to watch or listen to me prattle on on Zoom. All I can say is that um, anyone who grew up in Chicago or is from Chicago in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, this is a trip down memory lane, and I look forward to hearing your reactions and your thoughts uh, afterwards. My hope is that you'll get to see a side of Chef Trotter um, that no one has has seen yet uh, until this film. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Chef Charlie Trotter and uh, and the film. So enjoy, and I will see you in an hour and a half. Thank you so much for that great film. Oh, my pleasure. The story and what a legacy. Um, we'll take questions from the audience, but perhaps first you can just tell us how you became involved in the film and what was the genesis for the film. Um, I'm sorry in advance. There's a bit of a delay here. We have 50 mile an hour winds tonight. So uh, our our internet's not what it used to be, but, um, I was hired by the producer Renee Frigo to, uh, come on board as the director and the writer of the project. Renee had created an olive oil company called Lucini olive oil, which some of you might recognize from the grocery store. And, uh, Charlie Trotter discovered the olive oil. He brought it with him on Oprah. And you can only imagine what that did for her business from there. And so um, she wanted to pay homage to him after he passed away. And this was the way she did it. She partnered up with Ray Harris, who you saw in the film. He was the best customer who ate there 424 times. And together with a bunch of other foodies, um, they decided to fund the film and, and get it made. That's so interesting and awesome. Thank you for sharing your connection. Um, or how it, the start of the film. Um, well, Beth, um, I should add, I grew up in Winnetka. I went to New Trier. My mom was a food writer in Chicago in the 1980s and 90s. My dad was a builder in the city. So for me, you know, this movie might as well have been something that, came, you know, came out of me just as much as it was out of Renee. Um, I felt like it was my movie to make, and I was very grateful for the opportunity, so... Thank you. Um, questions from the audience? Does anyone have any questions for Rebecca? Okay, I'll go. How yeah. long did it take to make? How long did the film take to make? Well, we started production, physical production on day one of the COVID lockdown, and we were in development for about 
four months, three months before that. So uh, we wrapped in April of 2021 and premiered in October of 2021. So it was about a year and about a year and a half, give or take, um, all in. But uh, producing a film, making a film like this during COVID really took a lot of um, improvisation, which was something that I think Charlie, it was a wrench that Charlie threw in our way to try to get us to stay on our toes. Um, but, you know, like Donna Lee and Anne's interviews, his sister and his mother, I conducted those in just the same way that I'm talking to you now. I was on an iPad next to a camera that was physically in their living room. So it was like, you know, getting someone like Donna Lee to open up about her worst experience, one of the worst experiences of her life, her son's death, you can imagine how daunting that was uh, to do via Zoom, but but it seemed to work out just fine. And, you know, I think a lot of productions these days are have learned a lot of unique ways to save money just like that, <laughs> what I just described. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Um, other questions? Is this film available for uh, people in other cities? Is the film available for people in other cities? It's available for rent and for purchase on Amazon and Apple in the United States and in Canada. Um, we're working on getting international distribution now. Um, the woman in the purple in the back. <laughs> Was there anyone that you wish would have participated in the making of the movie but was unwilling? Was there anyone that you wish would have participated in the making of the movie that um, that didn't? Or that was unwilling. that it was unwilling. Oh, was unwilling well, we. we... <laughs> Well, we had a lot of people who were willing, but just couldn't participate because of COVID. That was one. Um, Charlie's, we did approach Charlie's second and third wives to interview them, um, but they declined. And I'm actually okay with that because I think for Charlie, all you needed to know was that his career kept him from having a personal life that was balanced and, and sustainable. Um, his son also declined to participate, which was fine for me as well. Again, this is a movie about what happens when someone's identity becomes consumed by their work. And I don't know that their perspectives necessarily um, would have would have been needed to kind of communicate that uh, through the narrative. It would have been a longer film and it would have been a different movie at, when all was said and done. So um that was that was interesting um who else you know we wanted a lot of the famous chefs to participate but because they were dealing with their restaurants closing down for covid and everything else and we couldn't really we had to really economize in terms of where we could travel um to interview them you know people like daniel Balud, who's been very supportive of the film since its uh, release eric repair um Ruth Reichel, uh, the food writer, wanted to participate as well, but she was in the Berkshires. So there were quite a few that we wanted to get and just couldn't make it happen because of logistics. Thank you. Uh, of it. Anyone else? Um, yes. What did she learn for her personal life from this uh, What did Rebecca learn for, for, about, uh, for herself, for your personal life? After doing the film, I'm Charlie Treader. Um, well, I used to play competitive golf. I played at Northwestern and then I had my tour card briefly after college. And um, I'll tell you, I'm, I know 10,000 hours. I know what it takes to become excellent at something. And yet I've never felt the kind of pressure to be excellent on a daily basis as I did when I was making this movie. Every morning I woke up at 5.30 in the morning, rolled downstairs in my house and started working. And the first question I would ask myself is, you know, am I going to be as excellent as Charlie Trotter today? And it was a lot of pressure. Um, luckily for us, we had a lot of, you know, cooperation from all of our interviewees. Um, everyone really wanted to tell a full, well-balanced, 360-degree story of Charlie, and we were lucky to get 
all of those postcards and letters um, and that we were producing it during COVID gave us the freedom to be able to go through them all and think critically about how to how to navigate his story, um, which was time that I didn't I don't think we would have had had regular life been happening at the same time. So I learned. Um, what did I learn? I learned how to cook. Um, I did this like Julie and Julia moment where I would try to cook something different from Charlie Trotter's cookbooks throughout the pandemic. And um, I don't, I, I can't remember one dish that's worth mentioning right now, but I did get very good at quiche um, during COVID. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, excellence is about care. It's about love and it's about the attention that you pour into everything you do, whether you're brushing your teeth or you're talking to a group in a library in Illinois, or you are, you know, spending time with your friends and family. Um, how can you be more excellent at everything that you do is something that I, I find myself asking all the time. Um, Rebecca, where did you get the postcards? Uh, how, do, how were you able to access those and use them in the film? So Lisa, Charlie's first wife, kept all those postcards all those years. And it wasn't just Lisa. It was Norman and Carrie and Anne. Um, he wrote, he wrote, he was a prolific writer and he wrote to everyone in his life and everyone saved them. It was like they knew he was going to be somebody and these things were worth saving. I mean, Lisa likes to joke that she moved 14 times and schlepped all those postcards with her everywhere that she went um, because she knew one day his story would be one that was worth telling. And when you read those postcards, it's really remarkable. I mean, he had this sixth sense that he was going to be the star of his own movie. He said it himself. Do you ever feel like you're starring in your own movie? And um, we were lucky to be able to, you know, bring that to life. Yeah, it was great to see the snippets of that. Um, yes, sir. Do you know what uh, Avenue Dylan Trotter went in his life? Um, did I you heard the question. I did hear the question. So I think Dylan um, Dylan had moved into the other. There were two buildings at the restaurant. Dylan was living in one of those buildings. I think they've the family has been trying to sell them um, and they haven't been able to um, for, you know, whatever reason. Um, Dylan is an exceptional photographer and a great artist and videographer himself. And I think he is attempting to um, get into, you know, the visual arts somehow. Um, then again, I'm not, I don't keep in touch regularly with Dylan. I did see him at the Chicago screening a couple months ago. Um, but, um, that's, that's all I really know. He's, tra he's been traveling and kind of keeping ties with Charlie's staff and, uh, employees and, um, working with them. I loved how you closed the film with a song by Bob Dylan. So that was, that was cool. There's an interesting story about that song, if you guys want to hear it. So um, we decided to use a Bob Dylan song for the closing credits. And I reached out to my attorney uh, who happened to represent Bob Dylan. And I said to him, I said, you know, we're going to want this song for, for, the, for the film. And he said to me, well, you need to get your request in today. I said, get my request in today. What are you talking about? Is everything okay? I mean, here I am thinking he's going to die or something bad was going to happen. And um, so I quick hurry up, get the request in. And then the next day, believe it or not, we get the news that Bob Dylan had sold his catalog to Universal for $500 million. And the price that we would have had to have paid for that song, for the closing credits of our movie I don't know, it would have been 10 times as expensive, if not more than what we were able to get it for. So we got in right under the wire for the friends and family rate. Um, and uh, we were lucky. That song says a lot about how I think people feel about Charlie, you know, don't think twice, it's all right. Don't worry about, you know, I, I think there's a lot of regret around Charlie Trotter. 
and how people perceived him, how they didn't know him and how they judged him. And were so willing to kind of cast him as this enigmatic figure without giving him any benefit of the doubt. And my whole purpose in this film is not to apologize for his bad behavior, but it's to it's to remind everyone that, you know, none of us knows the journey someone else is on and uh, until we walk a mile in their shoes and we should we should all show each other a little bit more empathy. Um, that might be a great note to end on and the library is closing in a few minutes. But is there one last question while we have Rebecca here that we can ask? Yes. Not a question, but a comment. We were privileged to have dined at the kitchen table, and you captured that experience so well in the film. It reminds me of the Lexus moniker, the relentless pursuit of perfection, <laughs> and screaming at the staff to replate this. It looks like blank. <laughs> I think Charlie did that because he wanted to perform for the guests. Charlie, Chef Charlie Trotter was a role that he was playing. And eventually that role consumed him and he didn't, he lost sight of his true self. Um, but that kitchen table, man, what a stage. And if, for those of you back who didn't hear that, this, these two people right here had the privilege of dining at the table in the kitchen at Charlie Trotter's and, um, they thought that Rebecca captured that perfectly. Yes. Yeah, I also knew Charlie Trotter dining at the kitchen table. Uh -huh. so I knew when his son was born and we had a lot of common things. Uh, he was that way, you were right, but uh, he got his perfection. And it was always a pleasure to go there. He was very giving and uh, he was quite a character. He was very generous. Yes. Okay, I think the library is going to close in like two minutes. But um, this was awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And for really reminding us about Charlie Chatter and how lucky we were to have the restaurant in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.